This question was sent in by Anonymous, someone who doesn't want his or her name known, and of course we respect that. Like all the questions, it was sent in to the Ask Prof Wolf page of our website, rdwolf with two Fs, dot com. Anonymous asks about what happened to the old argument, the criticism of capitalism, if you like, that said that competition gave way to monopoly, and that when you had monopolies, all kinds of bad things happened. You had to pay much higher prices than you otherwise would have. The company could control the whole situation, etc. In other words, there used to be a criticism of capitalism about monopolies, and you don't hear that uh, so much. And you tend to hear that uh, monopolies may not be so bad, and that monopolies don't really mean the end of competition, etc., etc. Well, let me reveal something to you that may come as a surprise. I was never much moved by the left-wing argument that capitalism goes from competition to monopoly. Clearly, that's part of how capitalism works. You know, we once had 50 automobile companies in the United States. We now have two, General Motors and Ford. That's clearly a, a concentration. We once had many companies uh, in the computer business. We now have a small handful here in the United States. We once had many companies making cigarettes. We have a small handful, and on and on. So clearly, there's a tendency for many companies to compete with one another and for the winners to literally eat, to absorb the losers, and that makes fewer and fewer companies, and with fewer companies, they can control the market. They can drive up the price because you have to buy from them because there is nobody else, the old critique of monopoly. What I always understood was that there's also a counter tendency, a reverse. The very fact that monopolies are able to make big, fat profits is an incentive for everybody else who wants to get in on that to say, look, try to get in on that industry because it's making unbelievable profits because there's only a few companies. So take the chance, get some help, get in there, and there are big profits you can get. So even though, say, in the 1950s and 60s, the automobile market was dominated by Ford, GM, and Chrysler, it was so profitable that all those Japanese companies and all those other European companies, and then later the Chinese and the Indian and the Brazil, they all want to get in on it. So the very success of Monopoly in driving up the price sucks in new capital to compete because the profits are so high. So that capitalism is a kind of oscillation. It has tendencies towards monopoly, absolutely, and it has tendencies away from monopoly back to some kind of competition. Of course, the losers in all of this are the mass of people. For a cause, simply, if you have a monopoly for a while, the price is very high, much higher than it ought to have been, and much higher than needs to be to get this work done. So we lose until the market and other capitalists get in there. So we are deprived of income because we have to pay too high prices so long as other capitalists aren't able to make profit by getting in there. That's what we say when we say that a capitalist system in a way holds all of us hostage as it plays out its own contradictions. And that, I think, is a better way to see the relationship between competition and monopoly in capitalism.